Darno and Uka, the Ratorian, escape from the elephant paddocks of Tor on the back of an elephant. Because Tarzan and Oruk profess ignorance as to how their friends escaped, Atea, white queen of the yellow men, condemns them to slavery in the jewel pits. Meanwhile, Darno and Uka have made their way over the city wall and into the jungle. Sought by Torian patrols, the two men make their way cautiously along a densely shadowed path toward a moonlit clearing. As they step out of the deep shadow into the open, a huge black-maned lion charges Darno. As the rushing jungle terror leaps forward, Uka brushes the Frenchman aside. Give place, Darno! Crouching low, the giant Ratorian drops to one knee in the path of the charging beast. Quickly, he digs the butt of the Torian war spear into the ground beside him. Coolly, he studies the point to meet the hurtling chest. At the moment of the impact, he lets go and rolls clear. All in the fraction of a second, the huge beast impales itself upon the spear point. The great blade stands out behind the shoulders. The momentum of its charge carries the lion to the spot where Uka had knelt a moment before, where it rolls, snarling and roaring in savage agony, tearing the air with claws that flash like knives in the moonlight. Presently, with a last gasping roar, the flashing talons jerking spasmodically, the great body stiffens and sinks quivering to the ground. Mon Dieu! May that... that was magnifique. Oh, splendidly done, Uka. I only hope that when it come my turn to reciprocate, I may be able to do it as cleanly and as bravely. It... it was nothing, my friend. Nothing. Eh, but, but let us hasten. We have a long way to go before we reach Roto. Bien, bien. But do you not think it best that we take to the trees until daylight? The jungle is so full of savage beasts. And the elephant patrols of Tor. They will not quickly give up the search for us, Dono. Mm, bien sûr, Ruka. We shall proceed then. May your spear, mon ami. I shall not leave it. It has proven a good weapon. And you have demonstrated that you know well how to handle it. Allons, lead the way. Uh, a propos, Yuka. You say we have a long way to go to reach Rator. Uh, just how far is it? Too far for us to go, as we are, and return in time to help our friends, unless we find a riding elephant. A riding elephant? <laughs> Mais, mon vieux, surely you are joking? I am in earnest, Dano. But, uh, but where do you expect to find a riding elephant? Here? Expliquez-moi. Tell me that, if you please. We will search until we find one. Hmm, c'est ça. We need a riding elephant? We shall find one. <laughs> it is a simple matter, Monsieur Uka. <laughs> Perhaps not quite so simple, my friend. But if we can locate the jungle outpost of the Torians, there we will find riding elephants. Oh, these men of Tor have outposts, then, in the jungle? A patrol, Dorno, mounted on elephants. They ride the forest paths on the borders between Tor and Rotor. Ah, maintenant je comprends. I understand. A sort of frontier guard, n'est-ce pas? Yes. And have you any idea where this frontier patrol is located? I think I can find their main camp. It should not be too far from this spot, if I am not mistaken. <laughs> voilà. There we have our elephant. Then there remain only the question of our ability to reach this camp before we are devoured by wild beasts. And if we escape that danger, can we make off with one of their elephants without being recaptured by these saltorians? Those are questions we will worry about when the time comes, my friend. The jewel pits of Tor, like a vast high-walled amphitheater with great crevices hewn out of the soft, clay-like walls, lie sweltering in the stifling, reflected heat that pours into the great cup from a burning sun. Gangs of half-starved, yellow-skinned slaves, men of Tor and Rator, linked together by long chains, labor with pick-like implements. Behind the rows of workers, stalking back and forth, are guards, each with a long, cruel lash in his hand. Constantly, the lashes curl out to bite deeply into the quivering flesh of a slave as a guard drives a laggard to swifter efforts. Side by side in one of the groups, Tarzan and O'Rourke wield their picks under the watchfully sullen eye of a huge, yellow-skinned guard. Yes, Tarzan. Tis devil's work, this. The heat. Quiet, O'Rourke. The guard is watching. Yellow swine. 
mine. Uh, Twere not for these chains, I'd dig the black heart out of yes with me pick in return for them lashes. Oh. Be quiet, O'Rock. He'll cut you to ribbons with his lash. Aye, and they cut like knives. Faith, my lad, the, the elephant paddocks were, were paradise to this. He's gone on now. Hold your temper, O'Rock. There's a way out of this. We'll find it somehow. Meanwhile, don't do anything to draw the guard's attention. A way out? <laughs> with these chains at our ankles, and them heavy-handed devils with their whips. Oh, Faith, man, you're, you're an optimist. There is, I tell you. I think I could break the chain. Ah, oh, then why don't you do it? We'll make a run for it. And have the whole troop down on us with their whips before we get well started? No, O'Rourke. There's a better way. What do you mean, a, a better way? We'll have to stand this for a few days. Long enough to give Darno and Uka time to get back from Rontor with fighting men. Then we'll start working on these prisoners. Working on the prisoners? What are you driving at? Mutiny, O'Rourke. Huh? Mutiny among the slaves of the jewel pit. What do you think they'd do if they were free and aroused to a fighting pitch? Mutiny? Holy St. Patrick. There's an army of the Spalpeans. Give them each one of these picks and a length of chain, or with a couple of good men to lead them. You're right, Tarzan. Tis a bright idea. Fire. The guard's coming back. Ah, the poor devil down the line there. Will he look at his back? There where the hellions have bait him. Do you notice, O'Rourke, there are certain men in our group and in the others that the guards single out to torture? Oh, sure, and I have that. Why do you suppose? They are probably Ratorians. It's the only explanation I have. There are two in our group. I'll work on them. Faith, and how will you make them understand ye? Neither of us speak their lingo. I don't know, but I'll try. Uka speaks English. Maybe other of his countrymen do. Then here's your chance. The guard's down at the other end of the line. Try that big grim-faced fellow on your left. He's had more baitings than any in our gang. Watch for the guard. Tarzan, steadily wielding his heavy pick, moves gradually closer to the yellow-skinned worker to his left. Reaching the limit of the chain, the ape-man looks up cautiously to find the slave watching him narrowly from the corners of alert, questioning eyes. With a slight movement of his head, Tarzan motions the man to approach. Do you understand English, friend? Yes. Who are you? I am Tarzan of the Apes. And you? I am Kaluk, a noble of Rattor. What do you want? Me? It means death for us both if we are seen talking. I know. My friend is watching the guards. How long have you been here? Oh. More than half a month, Luke. One year as you come. I'm... You would fight for your freedom if you were given the chance? Nah. Gladly. It would mean a quick death. Well, here we die slowly. Slowly. Can you talk with the other Ratorian slaves? And would they join us? I can pass the word at night when we are chained to our pallets to the men of Rot Tor and also the Torian pit slaves. They would all willingly die in an attempt to gain freedom from this. Good. Then pass the word and tomorrow we'll talk again. Careful, Tarzan. The guard is coming. In Atea's palace... Wong Tai, the Chinese scientist, hurries stealthily along the corridor leading to the White Queen's private apartments. At the door to the quarters of her women, he pauses, opens the door cautiously, and steps into the room. Why? Oh, Jeanette, you here? Oh, Dr. Wong. I thought you were with Atea and her women at the bath. Oh, I was, Dr. Wong. She sent me back after some of that awful scent she uses. Ah, then the ceremony of cleansing our illustrious queen is not yet over. And we may talk for a few moments undisturbed, eh? Oh, Dr. Wong, isn't there anything you can do to make her change her mind about that fight between Tarzan and Mungo? <laughs> you may save yourself from worry, my dear, if you will. 
merely convinced Tarzan that for the sake of all concerned, he must remain here as her uh, consort. No. No, we've gone all over all that before. Uncle Jim refused to let Tarzan sacrifice himself. I certainly won't accept the alternative. I did not think you would, my child. However, the opportunity to convey to you the thought that there is not a great deal of danger to Tarzan in this combat did not present itself when Atea mentioned it. <laughs> she watched me too closely. Oh, but, but he's bound to be killed if they fight. Mungo is so much more powerful, so much bigger than Tarzan. Victory, my dear, does not always go to the physically strong. Mungo's weak spot lies between his hat and his shoulder. And Tarzan's strength is not alone in his arms and back. Oh, but Dr. Ward... However, I shall use what little influence I may have with Atea toward a postponement of the combat. Oh, thank you, Dr. Wong. And perhaps in the meantime, we can... A moment, a moment, please. Permit me to finish. It is written that he who receives an ox must give back a horse. I also crave a favor, Jeanette, my dear. A favor? Of me? But what can I do, watched as I am constantly by Atea or one of her women? I would like to see the key to the door of Atea's treasure cavern. The... The key to... Oh, but good heavens, Dr. Wong. I haven't the least idea where it is. You must find it. Otherwise... Otherwise, Dr. Wong? Otherwise, my child, I am sure the battle between Tarzan and Mungo will take place very soon. Very well. I... I'll try to find the key for you. And now I must take that there. Listen. I'll tell you. She's coming back. <laughs> 